So today we're going to work on this little goat. I've named him Dreamy. It feels like a boy to me. Um, I've decided because I don't want it to be too, too long that instead of doing the full goat, we're just going to do from about here up. So we will get started. Um, you will have a link in the description on how to get this uh, line drawing that I've created for you. I think it's going to be a PDF. Um, and yeah, so we'll get started with this. So you're going to have your line drawing, your graphite paper, dark side down, line drawing on top, and then underneath all of that is your either watercolor block, your paper, whatever you have. This is the block that I talked about on the supply list, um, the supply video. So it's all stuck together with glue on all four sides, and when you're done, then you can take it apart. Um, if you have a piece of paper, it should be taped down on a piece of cardboard using uh, either painter's tape or washi tape. So, however it is, we've got, we, hopefully you're in this position where you've got a clean piece of paper, your graphite paper, dark side down, remember that. <laughs> And then this line drawing for you to trace. This is how you're going to get your tracing done. And then your pencil. So the deal with this is some people are going to want to be really, really specific and get each of these lines. It's really not necessary. I know some of you have a personality type that is going to insist that this done this way. You can feel free to do it that way. <laughs> um, for me, when I created it, it was very much just uh, this. So I, I did a tracing on top of my original artwork so I could do this um, little line drawing for you. And if you can see, I'm not being precise here at all. I'm just doing a suggestion. One of the things I work on a lot as an artist and as somebody who teaches art is not being perfect. It's not gonna make a difference. I hope you're tracing along with me. <laughs> it's not gonna make a difference um, if these lines are done precisely because we're gonna be putting paint on top of them, we're going to be putting ink on top of them. It's, you're never going to see it. You're never going to see the lines that you originally did. The only thing I would say to do is to be more precise around the eyes. So go a little slower when you're doing the eyes. But all these little furry places really don't make a hill of beans a difference. So just gives you a suggestion. You can tape this down too if you'd like. I don't because I just it's I don't need to, but um, if it helps you feel better, you can tape tape the edges of this. Again, use something that's gonna be gentle on your paper. So I decided to go a little bit bigger on um, bigger and a little bit less of the body just so it didn't take so long. And also it will help if you are doing this with kids, 
this is a, a good size for them. You know, it's hard for kids to do a little tiny detail, depending on the age. All right, and before you let it go, you might peel it up and take a little look. Yeah, it looks like everything is there. Okay, so that's the first step. Now you've got it on your paper. I like to get my paint ready, and to do that, I, um, I talked about this on the supply video. I use um, just a, a little water bottle. I don't know if you can see, yes, good. And drip a couple drops into my different paints. So today, I'm gonna be using um, this kind of red violety color. I'm gonna be using um, a orange color. It's got a, a fair amount of yellow in it. And then, whoops, I didn't get this one done. Um, a little bit of blue green, kind of a, it's green, but it's got, a, it actually has blue in it. And I might add a little bit more blue because it's, it's fairly green. So I probably add a little bit of, um, light blue into this. That's how the original is. Um, a little tiny bit of this limeier green. So the thing about these classes, while I say they are watercolor classes, and they are, they are also very much mixed media classes. So there's a lot of watercolor in them, but um, we're doing, in reality, this is a mixed media class. So we start with watercolor and then we move on to ink and we might use another type of paint. Maybe we'll use some colored pencil. Um, I think my main point is that you get the look you want. You do the thing that makes you happy. You don't worry about being a purist. I'm not going to ever worry about being a purist. I'm going to worry about my heart that goes into the artwork. And so, um, yeah, so that's how I do it. So I hope you enjoy the process. The point of this is that I'm not going to say, okay, you need to use French ultramarine blue. And that's what this is. I am saying blue whatever blue you want. And maybe you don't even want blue. Maybe you've decided that you're gonna go this purple, right? This really royally kind of purple color. And that's awesome. I'm all about, in my uh, in-person classes here at the ranch, I like to have people choose their own colors. You don't have to follow along and do exactly what I'm doing. I'm just giving you suggestions. So maybe you've decided that your goat is going to have green eyes or your, um, you know, the insides of the ears, instead of being light blue, are going to be purple or pink or whatever you want. This is a whatever you want kind of class. So you think about your favorite colors and your favorite color combinations and do that. If you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing, um, I'll let you know the basics of it. So if you would like to make a color that looks like this, if you don't have something that looks like that, um, you're just going to mix uh, red and blue. This is a little bit more red than blue. This is the same thing, red and blue. You're going to have to put a little bit more blue in there to make that color purple. Um, with this orange, it is just mostly yellow with a little tiny bit of red. And you saw on this one, this kind of greeny blue color, this is um, green with a little bit of blue mixed in. So, um, oh, and <laughs> there's a lot of ands in this first part. If you're using craft paint or acrylic paint, I'm going to move this out of the way and pull this in front of me. So you can see kind of the consistency of this paint. So this is actually a little bit too thick. thick. 
I don't like it when it sticks like that. Not for these background washes that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to add a little bit more water to this. That's better. Can you tell the difference at all? It's very, very watery. And that's what we want for this background um, that we're going to get. It's not even a background. Well, it is. It's the background of the paper uh, pet painting. And that's still a little bit too painty for me. A little bit more water. It's very, very watery. There we go. So if you're using craft paint, then the thing you're going to want to do is add approximately, this is all approximately, um, a teaspoon of paint. If you need to add more, do. If it looks like, no, that's way too thick. So we're looking for, see how it runs? See this, watch this blue one up here. It's, it's, it's pretty watery. It's, it's very runny. So that's what you're looking for if you're going to do craft paint or acrylic paint. And watercolor. <laughs> okay, so back to our little goat. So in the original, I left the tops of the ears white up here in this section. Let me pull this out. So you see how this front part of the ears are white? In the middle of its little face is white, kind of on its little uh, jaws are white. There's a little bit of white over here. Of course, it's legs, but we're not doing legs today. A little tiny bit of its tail. Um, and you can do that a couple different ways. You can do it with something called frisket or this stuff, which I did not talk about in the um, class or in the supply video. It's called masking fluid. Don't worry about it if you don't have it. Most people don't. But if you have it, you can use that. If you have it, you probably know how to use it, so I'm not going to describe it. If you don't, that's okay. We're going to just get our paper wet. We already have our paint mixed. We're going to get our paper wet, and we're going to skip over the places that we want to leave white. And you're going to get the entire paper wet except for the places that you might want to leave white. If you don't want to leave anything white, then just go ahead and cover the whole paper with water. The bigger the brush, the faster this goes. You will see me constantly pulling dog hair out. <laughs> I only have two dogs in the house. Dog hair out of my painting. It's no big deal. You just lift it up. Or fuzz. In case this case, this one's fuzz. I'm going to leave this little hip over here white, so I'm not going to get any water on it. And I'm going to leave that little chunk of the tail. I'm going to do it left-handed so you can see a little bit better. A little chunk of the tail white. This little place right here. Kind of the right-hand side of the tail. Now, I live in Colorado, so it there's um, it's very dry here. And I have to continue, particularly the last few days has been very, very dry. So I have to continue wetting the original places. So now I'm getting down to the finer places, kind of trying to stuff in there. So I'm going to change my brush again back to this little bit smaller one. So you're going to have to, if you live in a place that's, you know, Arizona or Colorado or California, you're probably going to have to go back over this a few times. And that's okay. It's no big deal. If you're not sure if you've covered all the areas you want, kind of tip your head at an angle and you'll see when the light hits it differently, you'll see. So I'm kind of feathering some water into the edges of of this ear over here. We're getting ready to do the fun part. The 
part with all the color. I'm hoping there'll be some kids who take this too. I would love to get feedback on how kids do with this. Okay, so let me think about this face. Does it matter? I don't think it's gonna matter if I cover it up with water or not. I'm gonna leave a little piece in the middle of its little head. Doesn't really matter the shape. Try not to try not to be too worried about that. If you have goats, you know that they come in all colors. Well, not all colors, obviously. And <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Wouldn't it be awesome if they came in these colors? Um, they come in black and white and brown, and they have all kinds of uh, variations as far as their uh, markings. All right, so look at your paper. Make sure there's no, like up here, I'm noticing that it's kind of puddling up here at the top. So I'm just kind of pulling that down. You want it uniformly wet. trying not to dry too fast. If it is, go back and add a little bit more water to the places that you feel like it's drying. Okay. And then you're gonna take, I don't know, this is uh, one of my round brushes. It says it's a four. I don't believe it because it's huge. And you're literally going to just drop this in. See, drop, drop, drop. Easy, right? Super, super easy. So this is the bottom part of this ear on this side bottom part of this ear on this side, and you're gonna let it bleed out like that. I'm gonna go ahead and just do this color for the first little bit, and that way I don't have to rinse my brush a ton. Let's see. A little bit on the tail, and if it gets other places, don't worry about it, it's okay. All right. That's it for that piece. All right, so quickly moving along so things don't dry. I think I'm gonna to go to the blue next. Give that a little stir. Get a lot of paint on your brush. I don't want it dripping off, but I want it to come off easily when I touch it to the paper. And these two colors are gonna to bleed together. That's a good thing, I like that. Okay. Where else did I put some blue? Here, in the neck, and it's gonna bleed. It's gonna bleed, it's okay. If you want to add it to the, um, the purple that's already there, they go together very nicely. If you want it to just literally just drop it on, see how it's just dropping off my paintbrush? That works too. Then mm. rinse out your brush again. So this spot right here, that dark spot, fell onto the dry space. But you know, I think I might leave it. Let's just see what happens to it. It's one of the cool things about watercolor. It's a kind of a, huh, I wonder what will happen if. All right, so this is yellow. Put a little bit of yellow in here. A little bit of yellow on the neck. If this goes on top of the, the uh, blue, it's gonna make green right on your paper. Cool. That is okay. Okay, this is gonna look really weird for a while, but that's okay. Every painting, go, painting goes through a strange stage. I always call it the ugly stage. All right, so that's some yellow. Maybe a tiny bit of orange, because why not? So it's kind of a, a yellowed out orange, not just flat orange. Just putting little bits of color of that in there. Hmm. I love to see how it moves. Makes me happy. 
Okay, so you can see how the yellow and the blue mix together to make some green. And then I'm going to go in and add this um, blue-green to it as well. Again, I'm just kind of adding bits, not a ton. I don't know why. Sometimes I have reasons and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I like just like the way it looks. All right. So this is the first step. From here, you're going to take and um, I might leave that over there. You're going to take this and put it in your oven. So for this time, this isn't at all exactly like this. It would be hard to make it exactly like this. I could, but why? Why do it the exact same? So um, I feel like I want just a smidge more purple in here. So you're only going to be able to see just the basics of the uh, painting or the drawing through here. You can maybe, maybe you'll be able to see the eyes a little bit of the mouth, kind of the back, a little bit of the tail. Don't worry about it. This all dries lighter. Once it's fully dry, it will, it will be lighter. All right, so the next step is to take this and put it in your oven or use a hair dryer if you don't have an, if you're not in a place that you have an oven. I don't know why you wouldn't be. Most of us are home. <laughs> no, there's actually people still working. Thank God for them. Um, so put, take and put this in your oven at a low setting, like maybe, um, whatever your lowest setting is. Mine happens to be about 150 and, uh, leave it in there for five, 10 minutes ish and see how it feels. If it seems like it's fully dry, then, um, take it out and start the class back up. Okay, so we're back and your painting should be dry and hopefully flat. Mine again is on a block so it stays flat. Hopefully yours has been taped down and it is also flat. I'm gonna use a number four round. I am going to go in here now and uh, clean up these, not clean up, but re-establish my edges. You can see that the, on yours I'm sure, that we've kind of lost some of our tracing. And that's okay, we can bring that back pretty easily. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of this green here and just kind of go over the edges that, uh, so this is a dry paper with the same paint we were using before, um, the same consistency, so it's not thicker or thinner. And just put some little tiny, so to do this, I'm doing, stir up your pain a little bit, and I'm doing very faint, um, light, wispy little strokes. And make sure when you're doing that, you're lifting up at the end of your stroke, and that gives the end of the stroke a thinner look. And so I'm just adding some, basically, hair to our little goat's edges right now, just to the edges. Anywhere I've got a little bit of um, green is what I'm doing right now. So little tiny bits. Okay, I only have a tiny bit of green in there. All right, and so the next one I'm gonna do, I think is this violet. Same thing, stir it up again because you've got two different colors in there and sometimes they can separate. I'm gonna go along the little ear here and make sure you, little tiny wispy um, strokes lifting up at the end, which gives you the thinner ends. The thinner ends makes it look more like hair. Not being real precise. We're just kind of reestablishing our edges. Okay, there. Got a little bit down here. 
and a little bit over here. I am right-handed and if I had thought about it before, I would have started over here, but it's no big deal. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of my yellow, a tiny bit of my orange. I would like to make a little bit warmer yellow, but not quite, not yellow, not orange. <laughs> a little bit in between. And again, just reestablishing your edges so you don't lose them. Oh, I see. I was missing this piece here. This is the part of the neck, the front of the body, and then did I just brush that? No. And then the back end here. Okay. All right, whoops, okay, that went on a little bit too much. It was a little bit thick, not thick, it puddled in that little spot. You take your, a little bit of um, uh, paper towel or even just your finger and blot that up. Okay, then I'm gonna mix a Whoops, I forgot this yellow. Double check and make sure you've got your edges the way you want them, at least that, so you can notice them as we go along. So take a little look. So I just did and realized I didn't have a spot. Okay, I think that's basically it. Then I'm gonna mix a warm gray. So I'm gonna take some blue. And if you've got watercolor, you don't need a ton. Just take a little bit of blue and a little bit of brown, and you're gonna have to kind of mess with it a little bit. Might need a little bit more blue. That looks more, that looks more um, dark, dark taupey than what I was wanting. A smidge more blue. And um, let me get a scrap of paper here. So as you're, if you end up cutting cutting your paper or you're using a type of paper that, you're, that you can cut, um, you might decide to keep the extras because you never know, you might decide you wanna use it for, for um, you know, trying things out. So when I mixed up this gray, I don't want it to be this color, I want it to be lighter. But right now, as you can see, it's fairly dark. So in watercolor, the way you get it to be lighter is just to add more water. That's probably good. So I added a couple drops of water. So it's super, super watery now. You see the difference? It's quite a bit different. This was the original when it was a little bit thicker, not at all thick, but a little bit thicker. And now this color is just added with just a few drops of water is much, much fainter. And that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go in and add just a little bit of this gray to the ears. Kind of just the where the two colors meet. And if you mess with that just a little bit, you can soften the edge of the blue that you're bumping up against just a smidge, so it's not so harsh. You see the difference? See, that's not a, a sharp, a sharp of an edge anymore. 
I'm going to give this just a little bit of a scruff too. Okay. Just to give it some hairy look. <laughs> so wherever you left, if you left any white in your painting, um, you can go back in with just a little bit of gray or whatever color you want. For me, it's gray. And if you run over that edge just a little bit, um, it'll, it'll soften it up just a smidge. It won't be so sharp. And you can uh, feather that out into the color around it. And then down into the white as well. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about in your own painting. Okay. And then this other ear. My wooden So you can feather this out again and give yourself a little bit of fur-like texture on the edges, on the top edge here. And then what else? So this little part of his tail, same thing. And down and make sure you're feathering it into the white a little bit. So it's kind of hairy. On a little hairy goat. Can't know if you guys can hear that sound. I've got the window open because it was warm. That strange bird sound is um, our guineas and uh, guinea hens, guinea birds. And they're really great um, if you don't have a farm. They're really great at, um, well, letting you know when strangers arrive to your farm, which is kind of cool. <laughs> and uh, they eat baby snakes and ticks, stuff like that. So they're useful to have around, but they're very, very loud. All right, so that gave us kind of a reestablished our edges, gave the, the white a little bit of something so it wasn't so stark. Um, now I'm going to go in and do a little bit more of this dry brush. So, you know, uh, dry paper, wet paint and not the wet and wet technique. So originally when we uh, wet this whole paper and went in and dropped these colors on, that was called wet and wet. And, um, and that's where it just blurs and fuzzes, which is, I, I like, it's a happy effect for me. So I'm gonna go in and do, um, let's see, I think I'm gonna add Maybe a smidge of black. So if you need to pull your black out or wet your black, depending on what kind of paint you're using. Um, go ahead and do that. If um, you're using craft paint or acrylic paint, in order to make it flow, so it's a little bit more similar to what we're doing here with what I'm doing here with watercolor, um, go ahead and add just a little bit of water and stir it up. And so it's, I don't want it to be this wet, right? It's not, not quite that wet, but um, how to explain it? How to explain it? So craft paint, craft paint is already very liquidy. Let me just pull some out so you can see. And put it on this little scrap here. So it already is fairly liquidy. And if it's liquidy enough for you to dip in 
and you know create a stroke, that's great. I to this consistency, I would probably add a drop of water. It's kind of like Elmer's glue right now. So I'd probably add a drop of water to that for me. I like it to be a little bit thinner so um, I don't have to keep dipping in. And it enables you to have these longer strokes, which is nice. Okay, so I'm going to paint this little guy's nose a little bit darker than what it is. I think I'll stick with the yellowy orangey color that's on it right now. So if you remember, there's going to be, he's going to have little dark nostrils, so you can go around those. And if you want to paint those nostrils first, you can. By the end of this, my hope is that you have a goat that makes you happy and that doesn't look exactly like mine. That instead, it's something that makes you happy and that calls to you. So I'm going to give a little bit of definition to around its eyes in whatever color is already kind of there. So I have kind of a yellow or orange. Um, on top of this one's little eyebrow, I think I'll use maybe a little bit of blue. It looks like there's too much paint. If your paintbrush looks like it's really picking up a lot of paint and holding on and it's like a, a droplet at the end, then either dab it off in your palette or on your paper towel. I always keep a paper towel at the end of my palette here. I don't know if you can see that, yep, at the very bottom. So I can, I can dry off my paintbrush. Um, so I'm going to go into the ears a little bit and add a little bit more hair. <laughs> Do your own thing. Maybe instead of adding the same color, you decide to add a different color on top of it. That's okay. Maybe you want it super colorful. That is awesome too. So you're just adding his fur. I don't know why I say his, it's apparently a boy. Little bits of hair wherever you decide to put it. Then I go into the interior part of the painting and just start adding, again, just little, <laughs> little, little suggestions of hair. If you look at the original one, there's not a, there's, there's, here, let me put it out here. There's, like, say here, how close can I get that? And you can still see it. Hopefully it's not blurry. Little bits of hair here little tiny bits here and here. But a lot of this is just the original wet and wet part that we did. All this part that's all bleeding together. Usually this stuff dries pretty fast and you end up not, if you're using watercolor, it's different if you're using craft paint. So if you're using craft paint for sure, work from one direction to the other. Um, because it takes longer to dry. So if you're right-handed, you'd start on the left-hand side, so you're working across and you're never dragging your hand across it. But because this is watercolor, it dries pretty quick. <laughs> Loudest birds in the world. So I'm gonna work on this edge here where the edge of the goat comes together with the gray. 
and cover up some of those harsh lines. And you remember how this dot just fell when we were doing the wet and wet and the blue fell into the um, dry area? I'm not going to worry about it. It's, it's a feature. <laughs> we will just incorporate it into the painting. No big deal. So for me, in these different areas of color, I'm just adding some more fur detail. So we're going to go into the eyes next. A little bit more fur detail, and then I'll start messing around with the eyes. Sorry, I'm probably mumbling. I do not mean to. I'll get in my own little land and have to. This is the uh, first first class I've done like this, and so I'm um, online like this. So I'm I'm remembering things and trying to. Oh yes, that's right. Speak up, speak up, so people can hear you. As we go along, these will get easier and, um, and clearer, I'm sure, and probably a lot less ums. <laughs> I don't know if you guys listen to Brene Brown, um, but she does this a new podcast, and I listened to her the other day. So right now I'm just adding, I wanted that to be a little bit darker, so I'm just adding a little bit more paint. And if you want it to be more of that wet and wet look, then I'll do a spot over here. So if you want it to be more of the wet and wet look, then I go in and kind of cover that up, you know, paint, paint all across that, that little area, and then drag it out from there. And at some point, I should do a live class because I bet there's going to be questions and I can answer them in email. If you want to email me at Julia at the Mother Ranch, um, I'm happy to answer them. But it would be fun to have, you know, those questions being answered real time, I think. Here's another section I'm going to add a little bit more uh, darker violet to it and then let that bleed into this other purpley section that I did here. Um, I like this kind of more purple color rather than more violet. I'm going to add that to this year. Um, again, I'm wanting to just darken it a little bit for me. You might like it just the way it is, and that's great. But I want to darken this just a smidge. Oh, Brene Brown. That's what I was talking about. Okay, so Brene Brown did this podcast. And how it's just, you know, when you're just starting off trying something new and you've got all the ideas and then you sit down and you do the thing. Um, <laughs> It's new. Things don't go as planned. And just like I was saying with this, I'm, I am not, I'm used to uh, painting by myself and I've taught classes here, but that's a whole different thing to have the experience of having people with you. So doing them online is definitely an FFT for me. Not something I'm used to, but, um, you know, a few classes from now, this will be old hat and it'll be much easier. Okay, let's see. Let's do the eyes. And I'm going to go in with, now it depends on what color eyes you plan on doing. For me, I'm going to do this little guy's eyes in brown, in, uh, which is what the original is. I do have some blue-eyed goats, but I'm going to do this one in brown. So I'm going to take 
kind of a really very plain brown. And that's probably already too much, but rinse out my brush, pick up some yellow. And I think because that was so much, I'm gonna put the yellow over here and add just a smidge until I'm happy with the color. And that looks ish about right. Um, so we've got the iris, which is that rectangular part. Pupil, excuse me, the pupil's rectangular part. We're gonna do the iris just around it. I've got too much paint on my brush. There we go. So just the iris right now. And maybe yours is blue or maybe yours is green and maybe you're a kid and yours is purple. Doesn't matter. It's your goat. You can do whatever you want. Again, too much water on that. Dab it off on my paper towel. Okay. So I'm going to give that a couple seconds to dry. I'll go back and work on this tail, maybe darken up that little tail a little bit. And, hmm, you know, I might want to add just a smidge of brown. So I'm going to take, so that I, um, iris is wet, and I'm going to take just a little tiny bit of this brown and dab it right around the pupil, just to give some dimension to that eye. And because it's wet, it'll bleed if you're using watercolors. It will as well if you're using craft paint, as long as you water it down. Okay, maybe a tiny bit of yellow. Let's see what happens. I don't know how I feel about adding yellow to this. It might work. It might be too yellow. I don't really know yet. All right. That's good for that. All right, work on this tail, trying to keep my hand out of that wet paint. Just some little suggestions of hair, darkening up the colors just a little bit. Again, you might be happy with the way your colors are, and that's okay, too. I love the way it's bled, in particular, in the chest. And so I'm kind of leaving that, that piece alone. Not messing around with that too much. Because it makes me happy to see. I like the way this all looks here. So you might have a specific spot in your goat that you really like. And just don't mess with it. So if you're going to work up close to the eye, make sure that you don't touch that iris with any paint because it's wet right now. And if you do, it'll bleed whatever color. So right now I'm using some violet going around the edges of, edges of the eye. Okay, into the yellow, some more suggestions and darkening, suggestions of hair and darkening of that area. Maybe not that yellow. Maybe go back to this kind of yellowy, yellowy orange I had made earlier because this was a little bit too, yellow's a little bit too light right now. There we go. If you want to leave comments on, I mean, you can email them to me, of course, but if you want to leave them on um, the YouTube uh, comment section, I am happy to answer them there as well if that's easier for you. Okay. 
Okay, just darken up this section a little bit. So it looks like the eye is maybe dry enough to start working in just a second. This is going to seem um, to some of you like a very mismatch, yeah, well, of things, you know, just like, oh God, what am I doing? What turns it into a cohesive whole, a cohesive whole, <laughs> is the black part. So when we pull out the pins um, or you use black paint, whatever you're going to use to do the outlines, that's what starts pulling it all together. So keep at it. Don't freak out yet. Not yet. Later you can. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and keep adding the pieces that you want for now and um, you'll see shortly that this all does get pulled together with the black with the black marker so little bits of hair Little bits of fur, little suggestions, that's all you need. All right, so underneath his chin, we're not gonna be able to see that he has a chin right there without darkening this piece right here up. giving some edges to his little chin. All right, let's see, what is opposite orange? Orange is blue, so let's take a little bit of blue, a little bit of orange, and create a little shadow just a smidge. So in your case, you might um, Google a, um, a color wheel, unless you absolutely know. Google a color wheel, and whatever color you have at this little goat's chin, find the opposite color, the complementary color for it and add, so in this case, my, my little chin was orange. And so I added just a little, I took some orange on, the, on my palette and added just a little tiny bit of blue. And so you still have the orange color, but it just gave it a little bit darker. Okay, all right. So hopefully what that did with whatever colors you're using, is popped his little chin forward. Hopefully you can see that on that. Okay, so I'm gonna feel these eyes. Yep, they feel dry. So I'm gonna use, um, I'm debating on black. I guess I should just try it and see what happens. Well, let me use this other side. Because usually, I often use a marker for this piece. And so if you need to do that, feel free. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking um, darker brown is gonna be a better color for me. See what works for you. Is it a dark brown or a black for the edging? And this might make you feel really com much more comfortable if you're using an even smaller brush than what I am right now. Like maybe the liner. All right, so I'm going around the iris just on the edge. And as I said before, we're going to be doing um, the black marker and that's gonna make it it's going to change the way this whole thing looks. Never fear. It will come together, I promise. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to go in. I think that wasn't as dry as I thought, so I'm going to give it another second and may have to go in. So if you can see on this piece, it might be blurry when I put it up that close. This is starting to bleed into the yellow part of the iris, this bottom line here. And so I'm going to wait for it to fully dry and then go back and fix that. It's no big deal if it does. We can fix it. Okay, anything else I want to do to this? I think a little bit of blue, little hairs. Where else do you want to add more hair to your goat? What other spots do you have? Look and see if there's anything else you want to add. And not even just individual hairs, you can also, like down here, if you make a zigzag, that works too. It doesn't have to be individual. Make some little zigzags. All right. I could keep messing with this for a long time. I don't want this to be a 16 hour class. And you, I'm sure, don't want it to be a 16 hour class either. <laughs> okay, so to make sure that I get these eyes right, I'm going to go ahead and stick mine in the oven for a few minutes. And um, while I'm there, I'm going to empty out my water and clean that up. Okay, it's all dry, had it in the oven, and I am going to uh, pull out the pins. The pins. If you don't have pins, you could use, if you don't have these pins, which are the um, microns, you could use colored pencil. You could use, let's see, um, paint. I'm trying to think of what else. Let me get my, let me do one thing at a time. All right, there we go. You could use paint. You could use a Sharpie marker. There's some other options for you. This, the one I'm using right now is an O1. And I always test it because sometimes they, you know, they die eventually. So I wasn't real happy with the way the eye was turning out there. And I'm not real happy with the thickness of that pen. Let me try a two or a five even. Maybe a zero five works better. All right, so I want to give some definition to this eye. Um, not thrilled with that one either. I have some older pins, and so sometimes they just don't work real well, and I have to toss them. All right, let's try this again. So get um, on the outside edge of the iris with whatever, however you're using your black This is where I will start adding, eventually, um, eyelashes. So kind of up and around the, sorry, let's see, is that better? Yeah. Um, the eyelid up here. Yeah, this pin is just being really strange. There we go. And on the outside edge of the iris. Okay, a little bit of definition. I am going to go back in with 
my paintbrush and some black paint and do the pupil. We're not worried about keeping a highlight because we're going to go on top of this um, with white paint to give the highlight. So go ahead and just give it a full black pupil. Okay, now I'm, I was saying that I wasn't real thrilled with the way that looks as far as um, the way it bled. And so I'm going to go, let's see, go remix a little bit of my brown, my yellow with a little bit of brown. Not a lot of water in that. Let's see if I can just straighten that out a little bit. I had a few um, blue-eyed goats this year, and I've been painting a couple blue-eyed goats, but this time it's a brown-eyed goat, or golden, I guess. Um, a little bit, we've got a little bit of this nostril on the little nose. It's kind of like a, a teardrop shape. We're going to add a highlight to that later, too. And then I'm going back to my pen. Give this little one a, a little bit of a, a smile here. Give the outline of the nose a little bit. Okay, starting to come together. Look a little bit more, a little bit more like a goat. It really helps when we get the highlights in there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go, um, let me turn my paper, and start giving some black outlines. I usually start with outlines and then I work my way in. And if you've seen my goats, you know that I like a lot of hair on the edges. <laughs> a lot of fuzzy. Again, I'm not thrilled with this pen. What is going on with my pens? Don't know what is happening. All right, let's try this one. There we go. That's better. So some, um, this is what's going to bring it all together. We're starting with the outline first. Which is going to make it look a little bit strange. I like places of long hair. I know goats don't have hair like that. I know. You don't have to tell me. So this part that I'm doing right here is often a little bit darker if you think about the inside of a goat's ear or dog's ear or whatever. That would be a darker spot in there. Let me turn it this way. And you don't have to give it individual hairs again. You can do the scribbles, the Z. Z markings if you want. It will definitely go faster that way. This is the shoulder. Okay, go across the top of the head. 
and this part, which is, you know, the side of the head, this is its ear, this is the side, that's like this little, um, what would it be up there? In front of your ear, temple kind of-ish? Oh, Lord. All right, now the sheep are in. Everybody's ready to eat. What time is it? It's 4.15 here today, right now. And my son is out cleaning some stuff in the barn, and so the sheep are certain it is time to eat. And unlike goats, they have the most demanding sound. I think I'm going to have to close the windows. We'll see if it stops. Okay, so give those ears some fluff at the ends, just for fun. So this is the um, top part of the ear, and this dark part is the inside of the ear. So I'm giving some dark lines there to kind of differentiate. You can hear that scratch, scratch, scratch sound. Just kind of filling in the dark part of that ear with some pin, just some lines. All right. Down and around its little chin again. Okay. For now, we're going to go back in and do some more stuff to that in a minute. But let's go in and get the rest of the outlines done. with the occasional little extra fluff because it's cute. Okay. It's looking a little Yoda-y right now, isn't it? I never really thought about that. <laughs> Baby goats do look a little like Yoda. All right, cross the butt. Down this hip. We may go back in and add some more paint. It's no big deal because it's watercolor. Um, it will be, it'll go right over this ink with no problem and you'll be able to still see, still see that ink. Or if you're using craft paint, all right, more fluff to the end of the tail. If you're using craft paint, we can go back in and add, um, Add some more black if we need to. Okay, that is all the outlines, I believe. So, let's see, is that dry? Eh, not quite. So I'm gonna go in and start adding some more hair, kind of like what we did with the dry brush um, technique there. And for me, I kind of wanna get rid of the sharp edges. So there's sharp edges between the gray and the white. So I'm gonna add some scribbly hair in there. And that all, that's all this really is, is just some scribbles. We're not doing anything, this isn't some special thing. It's, we're just either little Z's, little scribbles, however you wanna put it. It helps give a little definition. I'm going to do a little bit of scribbling across the top of this little goat's nose and at the bottom. So by doing some little lines down here, I'm just giving a suggestion of a lip, of a bottom lip there. Okay. You know, I think, now I did this in the other painting and I hadn't really thought about doing it this time, but I think I will. Um, 
So I'm going to go in and take a little bit of brown and a little bit of this kind of reddish, reddish brown. And with a really light touch, I'm just going to go around and add a little bit. Let's see, is that the color I want? No, nope, I want it to be a little bit more brown. Ah, there we go. Hmm. There we go. All right. Kind of a medium brown and add some, what could actually be this goat's maybe true color, right? I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit, little bits here and there. If it covers up, don't worry too, too much about it covering up the black parts, uh, the black ink that we just put down. If we have to go back and put a little bit more, that's okay, but it shouldn't be too much of a difference. It should you should still be able to see it probably. So just a little bit. I don't know why. Maybe some more suggestions of the hair. See what you think, see if you like that. I'm gonna do a little bit on its chin. It's funny, I can hear the goats because it is getting towards feeding time and I can hear the goats making noise. But the sound between goats and sheep Completely different. Maybe a little bit at this top edge. Remember to lift up on the end of your stroke so it creates a finer line at the end. All right, so we're going to go back into that eye then and do a little bit of eyelashes. So eyelashes on a goat um, are going to come, well, obviously we're going to do eyelashes that are not goat-like, but we're also going to add some that are. So they're going to come down this way from the eye, from this eyelash, from this eyelid up here down this way and out into, into this, towards the center, and then out towards the inside edge of the hair, of the eye. Um, so let's see, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, is the thing. And I only, I really only like a very tiny bit right there. The rest of the eyelashes are what makes me happy <laughs> and I like to play with. Those are the long ones on the edges that I like. And they aren't real, as we know. If you have goats, they don't have eyelashes like this. Okay, remember, I'm gonna go ahead and darken this a little bit with my pin. And then we'll go back in and um, and do the highlight. Now, how to get this so you can see it? Since there's so I've just added these long pieces here from the edge of the uh, the oh my the edge of Turn off, there we go. Edge of the eye, out. 
just for fun. And then over here, I'm going to do the same thing. Out. Darken up that line. You can give a little tiny bit of suggestions of other eyelashes on around the top edge, but mostly I just do these little squiggly lines along the edges to kind of give a suggestion of eyelashes. Goats also have, like horses and dogs, these, um, I don't know what they're called actually, there's, it's kind of like at the top of their eyebrow. I guess it's eyebrow hairs of some sort. And there's usually a little set of them with, with goats and so, and puppies and horses. And so I usually give a few suggestions of those and then down here as well. And just like with your paintbrush, when you um, start your, your stroke, lift up at the end, just a tiny bit. Lift up at the end and that creates the wispier ends. It makes them look a little bit more lifelike. All right, I'm gonna darken this pupil as well. All right, eyes are coming along. Okay, so we've got, um, again, we've got this darker, I'm looking for the darker areas now, what should be the darker areas, like underneath the chin, some scribbles, some little scribble scrabble Z's, you know, like I was saying earlier. Which gives a little bit of a shadow down there. And then I go through all the little places that I've made hair squiggles throughout this whole painting. So here, all these little places where I've made the dry um, uh, uh, paint the paint on dry paper little places that look like they're supposed to look like hair and I'm just doing some little bits of um, pen scribbles on top of that just to give a little bit more detail to it it's supposed to be fairly loose it's okay if you want to add a ton of little fine details, I used to do that kind of work all the time. And I'm really trying to do it more loose because I like that look and it's not something I'm, I have done a lot of in my life. Um, and so that's why I've been doing this style because um, yeah, it's something new for me and I find I really like it and it gets me out of a kind of a rut. So just find all the places that you've made you've made the paint marks and go in and give them some little bit of black detail. Okay. Now, hopefully you're feeling like, oh, okay, this is coming along. So what's gonna really help with your eye is to give, um, to give your little goat a highlight. So I talked, excuse me, I talked about the jelly rolls um, on the supply video. This is an 08. You can use this. You could use uh, just plain white craft paint would work. You could use gouache. If you're looking for gouache, which is um, opaque watercolor, it's spelled G-O-U-A-C-H-E. And that would work. So whatever you want. I'm going to just do the jelly roll because I would guess that maybe you guys would have that. I don't really know. And we're going to just take the top part of the black iris and put a little rectangle on top. 
that seem to have picked up. All right, I'm not happy with that. So I'm gonna switch. I'm not gonna use that after all. I'm gonna use, again, because I think you guys probably would be likely to have this, a little tiny bit of craft paint and a liner brush. So that's the little tiny brush. Pick up that little bit of craft paint and just go in and add that little white highlight on top. And you may have to do a couple layers. So it's at the top edge of, um, of the pupil. Okay. This one is a little bit too big. I'll probably go back and fix that. While you're there, you could add another little bit to the uh, top edge of the nose as well. And I might add just a smidge of white along the top edge of its lip. So as you can see, this isn't only watercolor. We're doing, it's really mixed media. And and we can, we can do whatever we want because we're playing, right? We're playing and having fun. You can do whatever you want. All right, so let's see what happens if. Okay, I added a little bit of dark to that. Could use that with um, the ink too. It doesn't have to be, it can be whatever. Ink pens, watercolor, craft paint, whatever you're using. It's a little bit too sharp on that side. There we go. Okay. You see how it changes the look of the eyes? They suddenly come alive. So the final things are, if you want, I often will do um, flowers in my goat and um, I usually use a similar color to what is already there. So if I were to put like a little, you guys know what butterfly bush is? So they're kind of, that's what um, this little goat has in it. There's basically, it's kind of like a, a very vague triangle, like a long triangle. And I just use it, I, I make it by uh, just doing little dots. I'll show you. So let's see, make sure you can see that, yep. So just real loose little dots into a very loose triangle. Do you see that? Very loose. It's kind of like the way grapes grow. And that's kind of the way butterfly bush flowers are as well. Oh, I'm really liking the way that came out with that little swirl right there. That's super sweet. I didn't notice that before. So little, Little dots will create some tiny bits of flowers. Okay. And then something to connect them all. Maybe this little boy goat has a little garland of flowers. Maybe it comes out the other side too. So a little bit more. Just choose one of the colors that you have already in your goat. Different sizes. Some of them are longer, some of them are smaller. And then we'll go back and add so to do um, a real simple leaf like this, 
I am pushing down and lifting up. It's, it doesn't have to be, it can be all different sizes. You can twist it as you go. Um, you know, this is, as I said, this is very loose. We're not being precise. We're not being perfect. Okay, so make sure you push down and then lift up as you're going, as you're finishing the leaf. I don't really like this fact that there's only one on this side. I'm going to add another little tiny one. All right. Okay, so for the leaves, tiny. Just little flicks of your paintbrush. Simple, doesn't have to be perfect. We will go back and add a little bit of black to that. It's just for fun. If you don't want flowers on your goat, then don't do it. Remember, this is your goat, not my goat. Everybody gets their own goat. Okay, and then at the end of that little thing, I'm going to add a little bit of water to that tiny blob of craft paint I had out, that white paint, however you're using your white paint. And I'm going in and adding a tiny bit of white, little tiny white specks, little dots on top of that flower, those flowers. Oops, forgot that one. Okay, they're probably going to bleed a little bit because, because the uh, violet of the flowers is already, is wet. And so the white just kind of bleeds into it. Kind of like this background. Okay, then the other thing I like to do is to go in and again, this is just me. I don't know why, just I liked it. So I like to go in and add some little uh, shapes and symbols and things. Sometimes I'll do this, this thing will spiral, right? Oh, sorry, couldn't see it. Little spiral, maybe some hearts, um, whatever, whatever you think feels good to you. Maybe you don't like any of those and that's okay too. You could do it with paint, you can do it with a marker. Some little hearts maybe. And while we're there, we'll go in and add a little bit of black detail to the flowers we did. I often will just do some squiggles around them. Let's see if you can see that. Just squiggles, nothing. Again, not really a lot of detail to that. Okay, so you've got your shapes in, you've got your flowers in. So take a look at that. How does that feel to you? I am, you could add, um, flower, little tiny like daisy-like flowers to um, different pieces of the body as well. All right, so for me, that is going to be it except for the splattering. Who doesn't like the splattering? All right, so I use one of my bigger brushes. This is the one that says it's a four and I don't believe it because I have other ones that say they're fours and they're so much smaller. <laughs> I would guess this was more like maybe a six. Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I have another one that's about that size, maybe a six, maybe even an eight. So I get one of my bigger brushes and I make sure I've got a fair amount of water in my colors, the colors that I used in the original back, background, right? Oops, okay. 
And I am going to take, if you don't want something splattered, I'll show you what I mean by splattered. So see all these little dots? That's what we're gonna do next. So um, I don't want the highlights of my goat's eyes to end up with splatter colors all over them. So I'm gonna take a, just a little spare piece of, this is some of the reasons why I keep this stuff, of uh, watercolor paper. You could use anything. You could use a post-it, anything like that, and um, just cut it down to whatever size you want. I might make this a little bit smaller, actually. Okay. All right, cut it down to whatever size you want. And this is fun. All right, so I'm gonna get some blue. And I just take my finger, I hold my hand out here and I whack it against my own finger, okay? There, can you see it? Yes. As much or as little as you want. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this before, but I usually dry off my paintbrush before I stick it in my water. And that way my water doesn't get just absolutely filthy. All right, so there's some blue. Here comes some yellow. And maybe, wow, it's just going everywhere. I always mean to wear um, like a smock or something, you know, an apron. I never do. I always forget. I haven't gotten on me yet. Knock on wood. Okay. All right, there's the green. So whatever colors you've used in your background is what you're going to use for your splattering. Violet. So when you first start, you have a paintbrush full. You end up with the bigger, the bigger um, little blobs, the bigger splatters. And as your paint brush ends up with less and less water in it, and you're doing this, the splatters get tinier and tinier. It's a nice look. You know, it's, it changes. If you want them big, then make sure you've got a lot of paint in there. If you don't, then make sure your paint is just a tiny bit. What other color? I don't think I have enough yellow. Oh, I don't have orange. That's what it is. Okay. So I'm just doing tiny oranges. So I just didn't do a ton of paint in my brush. So the oranges are very, very faint and very tiny, the little splatters. I think I'm going to do some more, a little bit more yellow though. There we go. This is why we have um, this, you know, poster board or whatever you're using to protect. Here, I'm whacking my finger. Okay, this is a ton of splatters this time. Yay. All right, so pull that off. And give it, um, pop it in the oven. Okay, so for the last little bit, and that is something simple and fast, you need to sign your name. That goes at the bottom. What's your goat's name? Are you going to name it? I don't know what this goat's name is. He's very different from um, this dreamy goat. So this is the original. And this is the second one. It's fun. You know, you use the same colors and it looks so different. That's the cool thing about watercolor. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what this little goat's name will be. But it's time to sign and name it if you wish. And I hope that... Uh, this was fun for you, and I will be doing another one very soon.